Stories of the Torah are not just stories. The stories are levushim. They're garments, otherwise translated disguises, masquerades, costumes. You know why we wear uh, costumes and uh, masks on Purim. Did you ever think of it? I'm sure you did. I, well, my take on it, uh, and, but, and we could talk about it, because there's probably more. But if you wear a mask, then everybody knows you're wearing a mask. Take it off. But these faces, these bodies, these wonderful things that Hashem gave us are also, in a sense, a mask. And so the, the putting on the extra mask teaches us that when we look at each other, we have to look m much more deeply than the, than the superficial and say, you know what? We've known each other when we were in different costumes. We were in different bodies. Ooh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, even if we don't remember exactly, but still, and for him especially, we can hug each other and really just thank you so much, Hashem, for allowing me to meet all the souls that I know in this lifetime. We are kindred souls. And Hashem sometimes, like in all, a lot of Baal Shem Tov stories, Hashem doesn't allow us to meet the souls that we really are closest to. It could be that, that we grew up in a family, although we're very close to them in a certain way, but like the black sheep kind of idea. Nobody understands me. Nobody understands you. Nobody understands her. And she grows up like very alone, very, very inside of herself. And she's waiting for that person, almost like Sleeping Beauty, for that for that prince who can come and awaken her, her hidden, her hidden powers. She's not going to just open to anybody. She's like a flower, but she's not going to open just to anybody. Each one of us, each little boy, each little girl, we're all waiting to meet those kindred souls whom we can truly feel, oh my goodness, thank you so much, I'm so glad I'm meeting you. And the sense came to me when it was first Choshev Tshuva, I said, I'm meeting people now for the first time in my life that I think I knew them in eternity and that we will know each other throughout eternity. We, we are an eternal people, and we're so connected to eternity that if we don't give that a space to breathe, we don't breathe into that and allow eternity to be in our lives, we're cutting off our whole life source. Right? The Jewish people, Yehudi, a Yehudi, Yisrael, is Yashar El, is Yehudi, is thankfulness to Hashem for um, far above, above, above anything that we see with our eyes. It's, it's the inner sense that something is important here for us. And the trials and the tribulations, within the context of a greater story, we can even handle them better. Because we know that it's not just we're getting hit, not just that He's punishing us. He's not a punishing God. He's an educating God. He's a God who loves us. His, God, His love is so infinite, so great, that maybe most Jewish people, they think that's a Christian idea. Chas v'shalom. Chas v'shalom. They think, oh, they took that, so we can't have that. Yeah. Unconsciously. Oh, they took that part. Well, we can't have that. He just has to be the tough God. He's looking out to trip me up. Why'd you hurt me again, God? And we're all filled with a lot of anger and a lot of anger and a lot of anger, right? Because we're not letting... Because we, somebody told us we're not allowed to feel like he loves us. We don't deserve it. I'm not worthy. Oh, my God. How can you live like that? So the stories in the Tanakh is that you have to enter into the characters. You have to become Adam, Adam and Hava. You have to be Moshe as he's growing up. You have to struggle his struggles. You have to be Yosef. You have to be Yosef in his own family, right? Incredible dynamics there. Dysfunctionality, like, amazing, right? You have to be in there. You have to, that's the way the stories talk to us. Allow us to... There's such a deep thing in these stories. David Amelech, God, he was considered a mamzer. He was hated by his own brothers. He was an embarrassment to the family. He says in Psalm 69, Muzar haiti lahai. I was a muzar. I was a stranger to my brothers. The Chazal say, don't just read stranger, read mamzer. They thought I was a bastard. They hated me. They blamed everything on me. That's the end. That's our connection to those stories, to those people. That's how they became great. That's how we can become great. He's not doing this to us so that we could, he could squash us and hurt us and kill our spirit. 
He's doing this to us because he knows that there's something in us that when we finally get it, that we will grow to greatness beyond. Like Rabbi Hurst says <coughs> about grapes and, and, and olives. That's what Israel is likened to based on the Midrash. Israel is likened to olives because when you squeeze an olive, you crush an olive, it gives forth oil. Yes, it's not a nice thing to be crushed. I don't want to be crushed. You don't want to be crushed. But if we can come out with the oil, if we can start to shine, if something can happen that I can always, I can, I can begin to forgive and, re and interact with Hashem in a new way, I can be b'shalom, I can actually come into, I can, mashlim means I can be, I, I'm not mad at him so much, then there's an opening. I trust you. The, I've done a meditation, and it takes a long time the first few times. I forgive you for everything I've ever, I trust you and I forgive you for everything that I've ever had to go through. And you have to go into your past and remember. You can do it for days and you can keep up the same, the same thread. You, if you write it down if you want or you can just do it in your mind or do it with a friend. You can do it now, then you come into the present. Everything that's going on in my life right now, there's a lot of difficulties, a lot of issues. It's very difficult for me. You open up and you ask Hashem, you know, you must have a reason for this. You must want something from me. And if I am actually able to access that, maybe my whole relationship with you ch will change. Please let me get that. Let me get it. And I want to trust you now. And I want to tell you that whatever is up ahead, I'm there. If, you, if I know you're there for me, Hashem, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be proactive. I'm going to work. I'm going to make my life. I'm not going to blame anybody anymore. I'm not going to be a victim anymore. This, you have to work on these things, but I like to at least say it, for the, right? Just get yeah. the, the, the principle. So that's what this, the characters in the Tanakh are about. It could be that in the Tanakh itself, you don't get the full story, so you have to go to the, to the, to the Talmud, to the Midrash, start to fill in the, fill in the, the spaces until so you can do a study on each character. Rachel, Sarah, you know, unbelievable. Okay. So that's entering into the characters. Now I say, picture a master actor. He's a ship's captain. Oh, the, the, the prelude to this is this. I see that on, in Israel, in Israel at least, I don't, I don't know, I haven't seen one license plate here where I see, I see what I'm talking about. In Israel, for some reason I see it the back of a Volkswagen, around the license plate, it says, Ata chai rocket pamahad. You only live once. And I, I reacted to that very, very strongly the first few times. What right did they have to try and put that on me? I've lived many times, and I'm not accepting that. It's foolish. It's foolish. Narishkeit. I've lived only, you only live once, because they want to sell me their car. You only live once, you got to get a Volkswagen. <laughs> so then I stood back and I said, okay, uh -huh, I get it. All the different lifetimes that each one of us have lived are part of one lifetime. Think about it. It's made a big difference to me. I said, yes, we only live once. And there's many scenes, and those scenes are even lifetimes, and in, within each lifetime, for sure. So I said, picture a master actor. He's a ship's captain. He wears the clothes of a ship's captain. He is out at sea, and there's a storm, and he saves the people, and it's amazing. It's a powerful film. Picture the same master actor as a musician, an orchestra leader, and a master maestro who changes people's lives with the music, the way he, the or, the way he works with his orchestra. And, his whole, his, and the way he plays that story. Now he's an athlete. Now he's a doctor. Huh. In each instance, the costume changes that the actor behind the costume is the same. And maybe he too is not the same because for with every new role that he plays, it adds to his understanding of the infinite potential he has to play many more, more roles. Picture a necklace made of pearls or some other beautiful stones or material. Altogether, they constitute one necklace. Look into each stone, each pearl. Almost in dreamlike fashion, each stone and each pearl contains an entire story, an entire movie, an entire lifetime. A captain, a musician, an orchestra leader, a doctor, and an athlete. See the string that binds these different characters and their stories as the master actor, the actor behind all the, the roles. 
Now understand that the master actor is your soul. You have played many, many roles. Who are you? Who is the real you? The soul. Have you gained or lost? You have lost because each lifetime involved the suffering of a temporary loss of, of true identity. You only thought that you were who you were now. You thought that you, you think that you're just you. I'm not blaming anybody. That's normal. I'm me, right? I grew up to be me and that's who I am. But the prayer has to be Hashem. Let me wake up from the limited view of myself that I have just from this lifetime. From the family I grew up in, from the schools that I went to, the experiences that I had. Yes, that defines a lot to who I am. But it does not completely define who I am. I am the string behind the pearls. I existed before all those stuff. And I will exist after. And the point for coming into all these experiences is to gain experience in this world that I could not gain in heaven. And therefore you've gained immeasurably, immeasurably because each role you played, each lifetime you lived, revealed something more of yourself to yourself. So I'll skip a little bit because it's just too much to read. So through the prisms of our lives we begin to meet the author. Now we want to go up above the, the soul level and who is the author the director behind who my, my soul is, is being directed by. Wow. We're backwards up now through the story, back up to his plan, his rasson. What does he want? What is this whole thing about in my particular life? And what is this whole thing about for the Jewish people? And what is this whole thing about for all mankind, the entire history of the world? I call it meta-history, right? It's just adding a little word. Once we begin to understand the deep lesson within each story, we can then divest ourselves of the story level and ascend from the stories to the one behind the story. First, the individual soul level, and then to the collective drama of the souls that all of us are part of, that we all knew about when we were in heaven. They said in heaven, who's ready to go down? And we said, we will. And we came down. And the, the, the condition was that we wouldn't remember who we are, so we don't know who we are. We're meeting each other almost for the first time. But as I said at the beginning, we got to start to intuit. No, it's not the first time. And then we get to the level of the author himself. So one example, for instance, is Adam and Eve. Who are the three main, char main characters in the Garden of Eden? Adam and Eve and? Beside Hashem. Beside Hashem. Our, our friend. <laughs> He was supposed to be our friend. Whatever. The Nachash, the snake, which is called... It's not, I think, in snake and sneak, or in English, it's the, there's a reason that snake and sneak are the same. It's a subtle force that Hashem created that we have to overcome. That's the difference between monotheism and any other polytheistic religion, is that in our system, the monotheistic system, it's not God against the devil, God against evil. It's God above, and He creates a, a, a negative contra force that we have to overcome. Right? that we're in a battle with. So, and what, what the Zohar describes there, and the Ari later after him, after the Zohar, is that the Nahash stole something from Adam and Eve. Stole souls. 